Sleepy Hollow is a quaint village nestled in the Hudson Valley in New York. There, many, many years ago, a peculiar school teacher named Ichabod Crane got wrapped up in a spooky legend of the Headless Horseman. Today, you'll hear the legend of Sleepy Hollow and learn about the heart-pounding events that took place on one fateful Halloween night. It's a story of love, rivalry, and the supernatural, and I've simplified it for you. This episode was made for intermediate and advanced English learners. Get ready for some excitement and some suspense. This is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you're probably aware that every year I get pretty excited about Halloween. Most times, there's also a Halloween special, an episode where I talk about the activities and festivities of this time of year. It is October. In episode 31, I talked about the history of Halloween, and I was there with my friend Liz and we both shared our personal stories about Halloween experiences growing up in California. There's also episode 82. In that episode, I told a scary story called The Red Spot, which is simple and very freaky. It's one that I've heard many, many times since I was a child. And if you have a basic level in English, if this episode is a little bit challenging for you, then do go check out episode 82, The Red Spot. In episode 83, we talked about October days, which was all about this time of year in the United States. In that episode, I focused heavily on grammar and tried to stick the present perfect continuous within the story as much as possible so that you could hear it in context. In episode 131, we went over 13 common superstitions in the U.S. and their origins. For example, why is it spooky if a black cat crosses your path? Why shouldn't we open up an umbrella inside? Where do these superstitions come from? Once again, that's episode 131. This year, we are doing The Legend of Sleepy Hollow in a simplified version of it. The original story was written by a brilliant author many, many years ago named Washington Irving. Who was Washington Irving? So Washington Irving, and I'll make this fairly brief, um, he was born on April 3rd, 1783, in New York City. And he began his writing career with satirical essays, but it was really the short stories like Rip Van Winkle and The Legend of Sleepy Hollow that helped him grow to fame. They made him famous. And his personal life actually greatly influenced his work. He spent a lot of time in the countryside in New York, in a place called Terrytown, which is very close to Sleepy Hollow. It's a real place. And he often traveled to Europe. While traveling in Germany, he was exposed to their rich tradition of supernatural tales. And he drew from those stories that he heard and combined them with this sort of experience of rural life in the U.S. The result was incredibly creepy. Creepy ghost stories in rural American settings. And people in the U.S. ate it up. 
In other words, they loved it. They consumed it with a lot of satisfaction. His stories were a hit. So Irving's success as a writer allowed him to travel more. He became a diplomat in Spain. But he's most remembered in the U.S. for contributing to the literary culture here. In fact, he was the first American author to earn a living from writing. So hats off to our late Washington Irving. What's great about the legend of Sleepy Hollow is that it's so present in current pop culture and just culture in general. It's been referenced in a number of different movies and TV shows over the years. You can watch the Disney classic, The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. You can also see, of course, Sleepy Hollow, the film directed by Tim Burton, which is an adaptation of Irving's story where Johnny Depp plays the schoolteacher, Ichabod Crane. And you can also check out a number of other series, uh, Sleepy Hollow, the TV series, for example. If you are in the United States, you're here at Halloween time, you might see a headless horseman. And this is the origin of that character. How has this story been adapted for you guys? Well, the original story is around 54 pages, which I reduced. And I also changed the words to make it easier, partially because words are archaic. They're not used very often anymore. If you want to read the original story, though, it is in the public domain. You will still hear some advanced terms. If you sign up to premium content for season four, you'll get the annotated text with 10 new vocab words and their definitions, a quiz, and of course, all of the downloadable files. So do check that out. You can access season four from the episode notes. Without further ado, let's begin. Once upon a time, in a small, peaceful village called Sleepy Hollow, nestled in the Hudson Valley of New York, there lived a rather peculiar schoolteacher named Ichabod Crane. Ichabod was not your average schoolmaster. He was tall and exceedingly thin, with long limbs and a lanky frame. His most striking feature was his oversized nose which resembled a beak, giving him a rather comical appearance. Ichabod was an avid reader and loved diving into dusty old books filled with tales of the supernatural and mysterious. He often lost himself in stories of ghosts, goblins, and things that come out in the night. Some folks in Sleepy Hollow considered him a bit strange because of his fascination with such tales. But he was also known for his intelligence and passion for teaching the village children. In this quaint village, Sleepy Hollow, there was one family that stood out above the rest, the Van Tassels. The Van Tassel farm was known throughout the region for its vast lands and abundant harvests. The head of the family, Baltus Van Tassel, was a stout and jovial man with a love for throwing grand parties and celebrations. Baltus had a lovely daughter named Katrina, who was the apple of his eye. In other words, she meant the world to him. He looked at her as if she was the best thing that ever happened. Katrina Van Tassel was a vision of beauty. She had flowing golden locks, rosy cheeks, and eyes that sparkled like stars in the night sky. Her beauty was matched only by her kind heart and gracious manners, and she had no shortage of suitors competing for her affection. 
Among Katrina's admirers was none other than our lanky school teacher, Ichabod Crane. He was hopelessly smitten with her. He liked her. Often daydreaming about the two of them strolling through the meadows hand in hand. But Ichabod was not the only one with his eye on Katrina. There was another suitor, a strapping young lad named Brom Bones. Brom Bones was the complete opposite of Ichabod Crane. He was a brawny, fearless, and mischievous fellow who loved to engage in daring games and contests of strength. With his devilish grin and boisterous laughter, he was the life of every party in Sleepy Hollow. Brom and Ichabod were like night and day. They were opposites, and they couldn't be more different in their approach to courting Katrina. Brom used his charm to win her over, dancing with her at every gathering and making her laugh with his jokes. Ichabod, on the other hand, relied on his intellect and serenades, reciting romantic poems and presenting Katrina with wildflowers he had picked during his solitary walks. As the leaves began to change and autumn settled upon Sleepy Hollow, the village was bustling with preparations for the annual Van Tassel Halloween party. This event was the highlight of the year, and all the villagers eagerly anticipated it. The party featured a grand feast, music, dancing, and merrymaking that continued late into the night. Ichabod Crane saw the Halloween party as the perfect opportunity to win Katrina's heart. So he decided to prepare. He meticulously planned his attire, selecting his finest clothes, and practiced dance steps in his bedroom. He also composed a heartfelt poem that he hoped Katrina would find touching. The night of the party arrived, and Sleepy Hollow was decorated with flickering jack-o'-lanterns, casting eerie, dancing shadows across the landscape. The Van Tassel farm was a sight to behold, with lanterns illuminating the pathways and the sweet aroma of freshly baked pies wafting through the crisp autumn air. Ichabod Crane, dressed in his most dashing outfit, arrived at the party with a bouquet of wildflowers in his hand. He nervously approached Katrina, who greeted him with a warm smile. As the night unfolded, Ichabod and Katrina shared dances and engaged in lively conversation. Ichabod even mustered the courage to recite his heartfelt poem, which left Katrina blushing. Meanwhile, Brom Bones watched from the sidelines, his eyes narrowing as he saw Ichabod making progress with Katrina. Brom couldn't bear the thought of losing Katrina to a lanky school teacher, and his mischievous nature began to stir. As the evening wore on, the guests feasted on roasted meats, pies, and cider. The music played on, and the villagers danced merrily under the starry sky. Ichabod was overwhelmed with joy as he believed he was making a connection with Katrina. Little did he know that Brahm was hatching a plan to steal away Katrina's attention. As the night grew late and the party reached its peak, Brom Bones decided to challenge Ichabod Crane to a game of bravery. He began to tell a tale of the legendary Headless Horseman, a terrifying ghostly figure who was said to haunt Sleepy Hollow. According to Brom's tale, the Headless Horseman was a Hessian soldier who had lost his head during the Revolutionary War. Now his spirit roamed the countryside, seeking revenge on anyone who dared to cross his path. 
The ghostly figure, according to Brom, rode through the night, clutching a glowing jack-o'-lantern in place of his missing head. Ichabod, with his love for ghost stories, was both intrigued and frightened by Brahm's tale. He tried to dismiss it as a mere superstition, but Brahm's convincing storytelling had already cast a shadow of fear in his heart. As the party came to a close, Brahm challenged Ichabod to ride home through the dark woods, where the headless horseman was said to roam. Ichabod hesitated, but couldn't resist the challenge, as he didn't want to appear weak in front of Katrina. With a trembling heart, he mounted his horse and bid Katrina farewell. The path through the woods was in pure darkness, and the rustling leaves and hooting owls created an eerie feeling in the air. Ichabod's imagination ran wild as he recalled Brahm's spine-chilling tale of the Headless Horseman. Every snap of a twig, every distant shadow, and every gust of wind seemed like an ominous omen. As Ichabod rode deeper into the woods, the silence was broken only by the rhythmic clip-clop of his horse's hooves. His eyes darted around, searching for any sign of the supernatural. Suddenly, he heard a noise behind him, like the thundering hooves of a horse approaching at great speed. Ichabod's heart raced as he urged his horse to go faster, but the thunderous sound came nearer, and a faint glow appeared in the distance. Panic washed over him as he realized that the legend of the Headless Horseman might not be a mere story after all. In a frantic attempt to escape, Ichabod glanced over his shoulder and saw a nightmarish sight. A dark figure on horseback, with no head atop its shoulders, was chasing him. In the place where his head should be, there was a flickering jack-o'-lantern. It was casting an eerie, otherworldly glow. Ichabod's horse galloped faster than ever before, but the headless horseman was relentless in his pursuit. The ghostly figure came closer and closer, and Ichabod could hear the ghostly laughter that Brom had described in his tale. With a burst of supernatural strength, the headless horseman hurled his glowing pumpkin straight at Ichabod. The pumpkin struck Ichabod in the chest, sending him tumbling from his horse. He crashed to the ground, and the world around him faded to black. The next morning, the villagers of Sleepy Hollow found Ichabod Crane's horse grazing peacefully in a field, with no sign of its rider. Nearby lay Ichabod's hat and the shattered remains of the glowing pumpkin. There was no trace of the schoolteacher. Rumors and speculations spread throughout Sleepy Hollow. Some believed that Ichabod had encountered the dreaded headless horseman and had been taken away by the vengeful spirit. Others thought he had fled in terror, never to return. Katrina Van Tassel, upon hearing of Ichabod's disappearance, was deeply saddened. She couldn't believe that the man who had courted her so passionately had vanished without a trace. Brom Bones, on the other hand, couldn't help but grin, for he believed that he had finally won Katrina's heart by eliminating his rival. And so the legend of Sleepy Hollow grew even darker and more mysterious. The tale of the Headless Horseman became a chilling story whispered around campfires and told to frighten children on Halloween night. The villagers never knew for certain 
what had happened to Ichabod Crane, but they were sure that the ghostly spirit of the headless horseman still roamed the woods, seeking his next unfortunate victim. As the years passed, Sleepy Hollow remained a place of quiet beauty and captivating legends. The tale of Ichabod Crane and the Headless Horseman became a cautionary tale, a reminder that in the dark corners of the world, the supernatural might be closer than one could ever imagine. And so, dear listener, the legend of Sleepy Hollow endures a timeless and spine-tingling tale of love, rivalry, and the eerie unknown haunting the imaginations of those who dare to hear it. That's it for this episode. I hope you like the drama of the story. I don't find it that scary, but I think it's so fun that this is a legend that has been in existence in the U.S. for over 200 years and that people are still telling this story. What happened to Ichabod Crane? What do you think? Was he taken away by the headless horseman? Did he run away because he was so afraid? What happened? One last thing before I head out today. You may have noticed how many unique adjectives there were in this audio. Now, if you head to the episode notes or the episode webpage, there is a partial cheat sheet with synonyms to help you understand those challenging adjectives. Once again, it's partial. If you want the full cheat sheet, you're going to have to sign up to premium content. But yeah, I wanted to provide that for you so that you can better understand the story. Some of these terms really give an idea of what certain characters are like. So you need to know these advanced adjectives. I know you're a dedicated listener. You made it this far. Why not listen one more time after you read those terms? That way you can hear them in context. If you decide to do so, this story began at 7 minutes and 30 seconds. If you're interested in getting the bonus material that comes with this episode, including the annotations so that you can know the definitions of challenging words and phrases, be sure to sign up to season four. You'll find the link to that in the episode notes. Hope you're having a nice day and until next time, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.